equations. And salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Opening prayer, Gary. Good morning. Please join me in opening prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are on the eternal court patrol. May they rest in peace with our Lord and Savior. May God bless those who are left behind. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. Thank you for your Son, Jesus, who died and rose and is our Savior. He took our sin, the sin which was ours, and made it His. Lord, I pray that you continue to watch over and bless those of us that are still here. May you forgive us of our trespasses and for all our shortcomings. I ask that you keep each and every one here safe as we enjoy each other, assist in our safe travels, keep us in your fold until we meet again. And Lord, we pray that you just embrace all those who are on the eternal patrol and we, we, we cherish the day that we will be able to join you, our Lord and Savior. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Be seated, please. Okay. I'd like to welcome all my shipmates from the USS Argo. It is my privilege today to present the tolling of the boats ceremony. This is the 122nd year of the United States Submarine Service. There's going to be a lot of reading, so bear with me, please. John F. Kennedy once said, a nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but by those men it honors, the men it remembers. By this ceremony and by our presence here today, we honor and remember the nearly 4,000 submariners on eternal patrol. We remember the 65 submarines in which they served, lost in times of conflict and in times of peace. By this ceremony, we remember those extraordinary leadership, courage and sacrifice, and continue our solemn mission on behalf of our nation. Okay. Uh, to perpetuate the memory of our shipmates who gave their lives in the pursuit of their duties while serving their country. For all who have earned the covenant dolphin, the tolling of the boats has a special significance. This ceremony not only honors and remembers our fallen shipmates, but it also celebrates the brotherhood of our submarine service. Reminds us of the unforgiving nature of the sea and that we, as submariners, every single one of us, once willingly place our lives in each other's hands. It reaffirms and strengthens the bond that has connected us, no matter what boat, no matter what rate, no matter what sea or era. All who proudly wear dolphins today know that we stand on the shoulder of our brothers who have gone before us. Ordinary men from every walks of life from every corner of our great nation, ordinary men who in service of their country, in peace and in war, did extraordinary things. Ordinary men who though through their leadership and dedication and example became our heroes as they continue to inspire and motivate us today. These are the men, our brothers, that we honor and remember here today. By this ceremony, we also reaffirm our commitment to today, today's submariners, our brothers and sisters in uniform who continue the legacy and traditions of our service. We pledge that their dedication, deeds, and sacrifice will be recognized, and they will too be honored and remembered as they follow in the footsteps of those submariners who have preceded them. Beginning in 19, the early years of our submarine service were full of great change and greater challenges. Undersea technology, training, operating procedures, doctrine and tactics, all evolving at a rapid pace. 
Evolving too was the culture of our submarines and our service. Integrity, professional competence, self-sacrifice, and uncompromising standards by all traits that would serve us well in the years ahead. The learning curve was incredibly steep. The sea relentless, relentlessly unforgiving. And many lessons were paid for in ships, lives, as we mastered the abilities as a fledgling submarine force. F4, Skate SS 23. Men on board lost 25 March 1915 which she floundered off the coast of Honolulu in the Hawaiian Islands. All hands were lost. F1 Carp, SS-20. 24 men on board lost 17 December 1917 after a collision with the F3 Pickerel, SS-22 off La Jolla, California. 19 men lost. H1 Seawolf, SS-28, 20 men, uh, 21 men on board, lost 12 March 1920 after floundering off of Matagala uh, Bay, Mexico, while under tow, four men lost. S5 Moccasin, SS-110. 32 men on board lost 1 September 1920 when she floundered off Delaware Capes. The crew escaped through a hole cut in the aft room, no loss of life. 05 SS66. 22 men on board lost 19 October 1923 after collision with a civilian vessel off the entrance to the Panama Canal. Torpedo Ms. May St. Class SS Henry Bruett received the Medal of Honor for his heroic action, actions. Three men lost. SS 51, or S 51 SS 162. 36 men on board lost 25 September 1925 after collision with the SS City of Rome off Rhode Island. Three men were rescued, 33 men lost. S4, Snapper, SS-109. 40 men on board, lost 17 December 1927 after being rammed by the Coast Guard Cutter off Providence Town, Massachusetts. All hands lost. S11, Spoilus, SS-192, 59 men on board. Sorry, 23 uh, lost May 23 May 1939 to the flooding off Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Later salvage, repaired, and recommissioned as a USS Sailfish SS 192. 26 men lost. 09 SS 70. 33 men on board, lost 20 June 1941 during a deep submergence <coughs> test dive, 15 miles off Portsmouth, New Hampshire. All hands lost. Mark. <coughs> the attack on Pearl Harbor on Sunday, 7 December 1941, plunged our nation into war and dealt a crippling blow to our Pacific fleet. As the stunned America rallied, the submarine force was already leading the fight. In the words of Fleet, Ad fleet Admiral Chester Nimmons, when I assumed command of the Pacific fleet on 31 December 1941, our submarines were already operating against the enemy, the only units of the fleet that could come to grips with the Japanese for months to come. It was to the submarine force that I looked to carry the load until our great industrial activity could produce the weapons we so sorely needed to carry the war to the enemy. It is to the everlasting honor and glory of our submarine personnel they have never failed us in our days of peril. The U.S. submarine force comprising less than 2% of all the Navy personnel would inflict a staggering 55% of Japan's maritime losses from 1941 to 1945. 
U.S. submarines would sink over 1,100 merchant vessels, 214 naval warships, representing more than 5.3 million tons. At the peak of their deadly efficiency, U.S. submarines were destroying merchant ships at a rate that was three times faster than Japanese shipyards could turn them out. For their vital contributions, our force would pay a terrible price. Seven submariners would be awarded the Medal of Honor, 52 submarines would be lost, and more than 3,500, one in five of our courageous submariners would not survive the war. This combat loss rate was among the highest of all military forces. Sea Lion, SS-195. Duty section on board, damaged 10 December 1941 by Japanese air attack at Civic Navy Yard in Philippines. She was later scuttled to prevent her falling into enemy hands. Four men lost. S-36, SS-141. 54 men on board, lost 20 January 1942 destroyed after running aground on a reef in the Makassar Straits, Indonesia. No loss of life. S-26, SS-131. 46, 46 men on board, lost 24 January 1942, after being rammed by the escort vessel PC-460 in the Gulf of Panama. 43 men lost. Shark, SS-174. 59 men on board, lost 11 February 1942, sunk by Japanese warship off Celebris Island. All hands lost. Perch, SS-167. 59 men on board, lost 3 March 1942, sunk by depth charge attack between Java and Borneo. The entire crew was taken prisoner. Only 53 survived the POW camp. Six men lost. <coughs> S-27, SS-132. 44 men on board lost 19 June 1942, destroyed following a grounding off Chicka Island in the Aleutians. No loss of life. Grunion, <coughs> SS-216. 70 men on board lost 30 July 1942 sunk by possible, possible circular run of her own torpedo off Kiska Island in the Aleutians. All hands lost. S-39, SS-144. 45 men on board, lost 14 August, 1942. Destroyed after running aground. <coughs> Continuing with our losses in World War II. Argonaut, SS-166, 102 men on board, lost on 10 January 1943, sunk by Japanese destroyers near Rebel, New Britain. All hands lost. Amberjack, SS-219, 72 men on board, lost on February, or lost on 16 February 1943, Sunk by Japanese torpedo boat and aircraft of Rabul in the uh, Buko Shortland area, all hands lost. Grampus, SS-207, 71 men on board, lost 5 March 1943, sunk by Japanese destroyers in the Blackett Strait area of the Solomons, all hands lost. Triton, SS-201, 74 men on board, lost on 7, or 15 March 1943, sunk by Japanese destroyers in the Solomon Bismarck area. All hands lost. Pickerel, SS-177. 74 men on board, lost on 3 April 1943, sunk by Japanese surface attack up on Sku Island. All hands lost. Grenadier, SS-210, 76 men on board, lost on 22 April 1943, damaged by Japanese aircraft and scuttled in the Straits of Malacca near Penang, Mal uh, Malaya. Entire crew taken as POWs, only 72 survived the war, four men lost. 
R12 SS89, 47 men on board, lost on 12 June 1943. She uh, floundered off Key West, Florida, 42 men lost. Runner SS275, 78 men on board, lost on or about 26 June 1943 by unknown cause off the northern tip of Honshu, Japan. All hands lost. Grayling, SS209. 76 men on board, lost on 9 September 1943. Sunk after being rammed by a Japanese transport in the South China Sea, west of Luzon, Philippines. All hands lost. Pompano, SS 181, 77 men on board, lost on 17 September 1943, sunk by unknown causes off of North, northern Honshu, Japan. All hands lost. Cisco, SS 290, 76 men on board, lost on 28 September 1943, Sunk by Japanese seaplane and gunboat attack in the Salu Sea off Panay Island. All hands lost. S-44 SS-155. 58 men on board lost on 7 October 1943. Sunk by a Japanese destroyer north of Rado Island in the North Kuril Islands. Only two men survived the sinking and subsequent POW camp internment. 56 men lost. Wahoo, SS 238. 80 men on board, lost on 11 October 1943. Sunk by Japanese air and surface attack in La Perouse Straits off northern Japan. All hands lost. Dorado, SS 248. 77 men on board. Lost on 12 October 1943 by unknown cause in the Southwest Atlantic en route to Panama. All hands lost. Corvina, SS 226. 88 men on board, lost six on 16 November 1943. Sunk by another a Japanese submarine south of the Truk Islands. All hands lost. Sculpin. SS 191, 88 men on board, lost on 19 November 1943, scuttled after suffering severe damage by Japanese destroyer north of Truk Island, 41 men taken as POWs, only 21 survived the war, 63 men lost. Capelin, SS 289, 76 men on board, lost on or about 2 December 1943, sunk by unknown cause in the Celibus Sea. All hands lost. Scorpion, SS 278. 77 men on board, lost on or about 5 January 1944, sunk by unknown cause off China in the Yellow Sea. All hands lost. Grayback, SS 208. 80 men on board, lost 26 February 1944, sunk by Japanese aircraft off Okinawa. All hands lost. Trout, SS 202. 81 men on board, I'm oh, sorry, 81 men on board, lost on 29 February 1944. Sunk by Japanese warships southeast of Formosa. All hands lost. Tullaby, SS 284. 79 men on board. Lost on 26 March 1944. Sunk by a circular run of her own torpedo off North Palau. One man survived as a POW. 78 men lost. Gudgeon, SS 211. 79 men on board, lost on 12 May 1944, sunk by enemy depth charging and bombing off Formosa. All hands lost. 
Herring, SS-233, 83 men on board, lost on 1 June 1944, sunk by Japanese shore battery off Matsua Island in the Kurils. All hands lost. Galette, SS-361, 82 men on board, lost on 14 June 1944, sunk by Japanese patrol craft off the northern tip of Honshu, Japan. All hands lost. S-28, SS-133, 48 men on board, lost on 4 July 1944, where she floundered during ASW exercises off Hawaii. All hands lost. Rabalo, SS-273, 81 men on board, lost on 26 July 1944, sunk possibly by enemy mine off the west coast of Hawala, Hawala. Four men taken as POWs, but to, did not survive the camp. All hands lost. And with that, Brad Brock will uh, Flyer, SS 250. 78 men on board, lost 13 August 1944, sunk by a Japanese mine while trans transiting the Balabat Strait south of Palawan. Eight men rescued by Redfin SS-272. 70 men lost. Harbor, SS-257. 79 men on board, lost 24 August 1944, sunk by a Japanese depth charge attack west of Luzon. All hands lost. Seawolf. SS-197, 100 men on board, including 17 Army personnel, lost 3 October 1944, uh, sunk by accidental ASW attack of U.S. destroyer escort and aircraft off Moratai Island, Indonesia, all hands lost. Escalar, SS-294. 82 men on board, lost 17 October 1944, sunk by a Japanese mine in the Yellow Sea, all hands lost. Darter, SS-227. 71 men on board, lost 24 October 1944, destroyed to prevent her falling into enemy hands after running aground on Bombay Shoals, east of Palawan, no loss of life. Shark, SS-314. 87 men on board, lost 24 October 1944, sunk by Japanese depth charge, depth charge attack off the southern coast of Formosa. All hands lost. Tang, SS-306. 87 men on board, lost 25 October 1944, sunk by a circular run of her own torpedo in the Sashi Channel off Formosa. Nine men survived as POWs. Her commanding officer, Richard O'Kane, received the Medal of Honor. 78 men lost. Albacore, SS-218. 85 men on board, lost 7 November 1944. Sunk by Japanese mine off the northern coast of Honshu, Japan. All hands lost. Growler, SS-215. 86 men on board, lost 8 November 1944, sunk by Japanese surface attack off the coast of Mindoro, Philippines. All hands lost. Scamp, SS-277. 83 men on board, lost on or about 11 November 1944, sunk by Japanese patrol planes and coastal defense vessels in the Tokyo Bay Area. All hands lost. Swordfish, SS-193. 82 men on board, lost 12 January 1945, sunk by depth charge attack or mine off the coast of Okinawa. All hands lost. Barbell, SS-316. 81 men on board, 
Lost 4 February 1945, sunk by Japanese aircraft off the southern entrance to the Palawan Passage. All hands lost. <coughs> Key, SS-369. 87 men on board lost 20 March 1945, sunk by a Japanese submarine or mine off the coast of Okinawa. All hands lost. Trigger, SS-237. 89 men on board lost 28 March 1945 sunk by Japanese aircraft and surface craft in the East China Sea. All hands lost. Snook, SS-279. 84 men on board lost 8 April 1945, sunk by unknown causes in the Sakashima Shoto area off Formosa. All hands lost. Lagarto, SS-371. 86 men on board lost 3 May 1945, sunk by a Japanese mine layer in the Gulf of Siam. All hands lost. Bonefish, SS-223. 85 men on board lost 18 June 1945, sunk by a Japanese destroyer in the Sea of Japan. All hands lost. Bullhead. SS-332, 84 men on board, lost 6 August 1945, sunk by a Japanese air attack off Bali, all hands lost. Bullhead was the last U.S. submarine sunk during World War II. Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz said, we who survived World War II and are privileged to join our loved ones at home salute those gallant officers and men of our submarines who lost their lives in that long struggle. We shall never forget that it was our submarines who held the lines against the enemy while our fleets replaced losses and repaired wounds. In the post-World War II years, our submarine force continued to evolve with the advent of nuclear propulsion, guided and ballistic missiles, and ever more sophisticated sensors and weapons systems. Modern technology gave us more speed and drove us to new depths. A hot war became a cold war, and the transition from an all-diesel to an all-nuclear powered force brought new challenges, new lessons, and more losses. Kachino, SS-345. 79 men on board lost 26 August 1949, foundered after a battery explosion and fire during a severe storm off Norway. One man lost. Also, also lost were six men from Tusk, SS-426, during the rescue. Stickleback, SS-415. 82 men on board lost 29 May 1958, sunk after collision with USS Silverstein DE-534. No loss of life. Thresher, SSN 593. 129 men on board, lost 10 April 1963 during a deep submergent test dive off New England. All hands lost. Scorpion, SSN 589. 99 men on board lost 22 May 1968 off the Azores to an unknown cause, possibly a battery explosion. All hands lost. Scorpion was the last submarine lost in this present era. Throughout the history of the submarine force, there have been many accidents and casualties which did not directly result in the loss of the boat, but in which submariners died. Performing their duties, some were lost individually and some with their shipmates, some at sea and some in port. We honor and remember all of them here today. Let us remember our shipmates who have slipped the moor 
on an internal patrol between 2019 and the present. Commanding Officer USS Sargo, SSN 583. Vice Admiral John M. H. Nicholson. Captain Michael A. McBride. Captain John H. Cox. Chief of the Boat, Donald E. Cole. And our shipmates, <clears throat> Lawrence Butts, QM3 SS. Warren R. Forrest, EMCM SS. Martin T. Gillette, EMC SS. Mike Irwin, TM2 SS. Lieutenant Commander Harold R. Lane. Captain Kenneth A. Lee. Donald F. Reisenhoover, TMCS SS. Michael Warren, IC3 SS. David Willens, TM2 SS. And a civilian who rode aboard the Arctic uh, trip in 1959 and 1960, Robert Stewart, civilian. Sailors, rest yours. As we conclude this pulling of the boat ceremony, let us again reflect upon the leadership, example, and sacrifice of our submarine force personnel and predecessors. Their legacy of courage and selfless service to our country and nation continue to inspire each of us and has made us better submariners, better shipmates, and better citizens. Let us this day rededicate ourselves to the perpetuating of their memory and that their deeds and sacrifice may be an example and an inspiration to future generations and that their contribution to our freedom is long honored and remembered. As we, we remember our brothers, let us pray that no other U.S. submarine or any of her officers and crew will ever be added to our list of ships and shipmates, those who have passed on to final control. Let us now, let us now observe a moment of silence for all of our lost shipmates, all Americans living in peace, enjoying the fruits of our freedom, and are forever in their debt. May their rules May their souls rest in place, peace, please stand for a moment of silence. This concludes our ceremony. Sailors, rest your words. I would like to thank everybody for their attendance and your attention to this 
solemn occasion that we've, we've done.